Hi, it's Katrina. From a mysterious underground pyramid to a real-life house of horrors for children, here are 10 mysterious discoveries made underground. Number 10. Underground Pyramid Underneath Orvieto, Italy, there is a mysterious ancient underground pyramid made by the Etruscans. Archaeologists found the pyramid after excavating a wine cellar that had steps leading downward into tunnels and caves. Then they entered a chamber where the walls were carved to slope upwards, leaving a hollow pyramid structure, but they have no idea what it was for. The Etruscans built many underground chambers and tunnels, but this is the first time that archaeologists have discovered a structure like this carved out in a pyramid shape. The Etruscans reached their peak from the 8th to the 5th century BC in central Italy and were famous for their art, commerce, writing, and metalwork, but were absorbed by the Roman Empire. They left many secrets behind, including these tunnels and pyramids that were backfilled with dirt towards the end of the 5th century BC, although nobody knows why. Archaeologists think that there are several other pyramid structures under the city. As they dig out this one, they have uncovered many exciting artifacts, including over 150 examples of Etruscan language inscriptions and a wide array of ceramic materials. Now, archaeologists are trying to dig their way to the bottom of the pyramid structure and see what they can find. Number 9. Dragon's Eye the Hall of Giants Stone Mine in Lancashire, UK, is home to a metamorphic rock formation called the Dragon's Eye. It looks like a dragon that just woke up, and it might blink at any moment. The smooth, multicolored structure formed after a mine tunnel roof collapsed, exposing the different colored sediment. Curiously, official information about the site is conspicuously absent from the internet, but all signs point toward it being a real place. In late 2019, the YouTube channel Underground Explorer C9C posted a video showing first-hand footage of their trek into the mine that houses the dragon's eye, and their Instagram account features photos detailing the journey. Some pictures show the dragon's eye as rounded when it's actually flat, either because the adventurers who supposedly discovered the formation photographed it using a fish-eye camera lens, or because the angle of the structure creates an optical illusion. It's hard to say for sure because no one is saying where it is. If you want to see the formation for yourself, you might have trouble determining its exact location within northern England. It appears as though those who know where the dragon's eye is are staying quiet about it. Considering the site's status as a collapsed mine, it's also likely that it is not safe and is not open to the public. Number 8. Bavarian Goblin Holes there are over 700 strange underground chambers and tunnels dating back to the Middle Ages throughout the German state of Bavaria, linking churches, farmhouses, cemeteries, and seemingly random parts of the forest. Some local legends claim that elves built and lived in the structures, nicknamed goblin holes, while other stories allude to the tunnels being part of an extended system of emergency exits from castles. It makes sense that the goblin holes are associated with small forest creatures, most of the chambers in the labyrinth of vaults, also known as an Erdstall, measure just 66 to 164 feet long at the most. Explorers must often walk in a hunched position and even crawl on all fours in some places, where the tunnel's height shrinks to just 2.25 feet high or less. The Erdstall is no secret to locals, and similar networks exist in other parts of Europe, including Austria, Hungary, and Spain. Nobody knows what these uncomfortably narrow passageways were used for, especially considering how their size makes them impractical for food storage or as a dwelling, and there is no evidence they housed animals. Few artifacts have turned up inside the tunnels, and they are completely absent from historical records. In 2011, archaeologists began exploring the system in hopes of learning more about its origins and uses, but they never announced any groundbreaking discoveries or even any clues that could help bring them one step closer to solving the lingering mysteries surrounding the goblin holes. And now for number seven. But first, want to give a big shout out to Lori Carter for supporting this channel. Thanks so much to all of our subscribers. And if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number seven, Underground Orchid. Australia is famous for its unique wildlife, but it is also home to many bizarre plants, including 1,550 orchid species, nearly all of which grow nowhere else on Earth. Perhaps the strangest among these flowers is the Rhizanthella, more commonly known as the underground orchid. It's small, pale, smells like vanilla, and as its name indicates, spends its entire life underground. 
Reporting for the conversation, botanist Mark Clements explained that a farmer in Western Australia discovered the unusual flower in 1928 and sent samples to experts at the Western Australian Herbarium for identification. Then, in 1931, an orchid hunter discovered another underground orchid in New South Wales on the eastern side of the country. Clements, who has worked extensively with these flowers, identified yet another new species of underground orchid last year, bringing the total known Rhizanthella species up to five. Underground orchids bloom after spending most of their lives as a thickened underground stem or a rhizome. Even after a flower blossoms, the plant remains entirely underground but near the surface, covered in soil and dead leaves. All Rhizanthella species are either endangered or critically endangered, except for the newly discovered variety, which Clemens said is probably highly vulnerable. Experts struggle to conserve underground orchids because they are very difficult to find and grow, and little is known about the flower's biology. To save them from extinction, scientists will have to learn more about them and locate more populations. Number 6. Secret Rooms while renovating the historic three-story commercial exchange building in Jackson, Michigan last year, workers noticed that a piece of heavy machinery was sinking into the ground, leading to their discovery of two large, unused underground rooms. Nobody knows what the rooms were used for. The discovery baffled Sharon Buchti, the building's operations manager, and all the other employees. We're all just blown away. It's a big mystery at this point, Sharon said. The building's owner had no idea the rooms existed. Both rooms are made from the same concrete blocks as the rest of the building and were found empty, minus some rusty pipes and a 28-inch long chute. One room measures 12 by 14 feet, while the other is 12 by 17 feet. In an interview with M Live, Charlie Butchdy, a member of the work crew that found the room, said, I was hoping to find some hidden treasures in there from who knows when. We're still researching, so fingers crossed we get to find something. Either way, Butchdy said that he was happy to partake in the mysterious and historic discovery. The Commercial Exchange Building was built in 1895, after the building that occupied the site before it burned down. It served as a manufacturing facility until the 1960s, when it was renovated into office space. During that time, crews found carriage parts that were left behind by builders who once worked at the site. Local historians believe the rooms, which sat beneath grass and debris prior to their discovery, were constructed with the rest of the building. Records show that there was originally a structure above them, but it was apparently taken down at some point. While experts admitted that they may never know what the spaces were used for, Harrison Marcotte, a curator for the local Ella Sharp Museum, believes that they housed steam kilns that were used for drying lumber. The team told the local news that they are open to other ideas and that they welcome input from internet sleuths and locals who think they might be able to solve the mystery. So, you know what to do! Number 5. Hidden Hatch Last year, Julie Jukes and Roger Rockhill purchased a 55-acre property in Pennsylvania with plans to establish a home and winery. They made a series of surprising discoveries on the land, which was once a summer camp for the local Jewish community center, but one stood out above the rest. At the bottom of a rusting cylindrical tank sits a hatch hidden under bushes, which appears to lead underground. The tank sits behind a barn and is surrounded by trees, where it remains mostly hidden from view. The couple didn't even notice it was there until the fall, when the leaves left the trees bare. There is no roof on the outer cylinder, which has a waist-high, square-shaped door and is equipped with a tube resembling an air vent. It houses a smaller, similarly rusted cylindrical structure containing a square-shaped opening just big enough for a person to fit through, which leads to the hatch. Jukes and Rockhill told The Morning Call that they attempted to open the hatch with no success and that they feared they would damage what's inside if they forced their way in. The pair took to social media for help identifying the structure. Many members of the community knew about the alleged bunker, which is rumored to be contained within a buried train caboose or a truck tanker, but nobody had ever seen it, including Eric Lightman, the executive director of the Jewish Community Center that purchased the property from a man named Robert Moyer in 1961. While some locals believe that the hatch simply leads to a water tank, others, including the new landowners, believe that there's more to the story. Is it a bunker? And if so, for what? The answer remains to be seen. Number 4. The Williamson Tunnels Between 1810 and 1840, an eccentric tobacco merchant and philanthropist named Joseph Williamson built a series of houses and a labyrinth of underground tunnels and chambers near his home in the Edge Hill area of Liverpool, England. He passed away in 1840 without ever telling anyone what the tunnels were for. Some say that Williamson was a religious fanatic who believed Armageddon was coming. Others said that he was simply giving meaningless work to soldiers who had recently returned from the Napoleonic Wars and needed employment, gave them something to do. 
The tunnels were gradually filled with rubble following Williamson's death and remained inaccessible until 1995, when archaeologists began investigating them. Excavations are ongoing, with some sections of the extensive subterranean network still filled with rubble, while others have been cleared out and are open to the public. Little is known about Williamson beyond what James Stonehouse, a 19th century antiquarian, wrote about the man. Williamson apparently took his reasons for building the tunnel to his grave, and while they are being opened up for the public's enjoyment, we have no clue why he made them. Number 3. Fosse Dion In Tonnerre in northwestern France, there is a spring called the Fosse Dion, which is fed by at least one underground river, as well as rainwater from nearby mountains, which travels to the spring via the limestone plateau surrounding the area. Despite what is known about the Fosse Dion, there are still some mysteries surrounding it. On average, the spring gushes 311 liters of water per second, yet nobody has ever pinpointed the exact location of its source. Its centuries-long use dates back at least to Roman times, when the ancient Romans harnessed it for drinking water. The Celts treated the spring as sacred, and in the 18th century, the French placed a stone rim around the pool and used it as a public bathhouse. It was during that time that people began wondering where the apparently infinite water supply came from. Naturally, legends spread, including one claiming that the spring represented a portal to another world, and another story about a serpent that patrolled the bottom of the well. In 1974, two divers descended into the Faustion to try identifying its source. Both died, and so did another diver who attempted to explore the spring in 1996. In 2019, the mayor hired professional diver pierre Eric de Seine to venture into the well's deadly depths, granting an exception to the town's diving ban, which was implemented following the 1996 fatality. De Seine made it farther than the other divers had, traveling over 230 feet down and 1,214 feet from the entrance of the spring. He reached what he called the Unknown Zone, a place untouched by light and that no other human had ever accessed before. Before surfacing, Dessain reached a gallery that he noticed was not blocked, meaning it could be possible to venture further in. But he got no closer than previous explorers to locating the spring source, and believes that the mystery may never be solved. Dessain said in a BBC documentary, in fact, the springs and the galleries do not offer themselves easily. We have human and technological limits. Number 2. Underground City in the 1980s, construction workers discovered an ancient city beneath the streets and buildings of northeastern Turkey's Aydin Tepe district. Located within the Beybert province, one of the country's least populated regions, the Aydin Tepe underground city was carved over six and a half feet below ground without any building materials. Corridors measuring one meter wide and two meters high connect what were once hallways, chambers, cellars, water sources, storage rooms, and a pool. The city dates back roughly 3,000 years and was used as a refuge from Roman persecution during early Christianity, according to the district governor. Evidence shows that Muslims also occupied the site at some point. Those sheltering in the underground city closed their secret settlement off from the outside world by covering its entrance with a round piece of rock measuring one and a half meters in diameter. A portion of the city was open to the public last year and excavations are ongoing. Experts believe that Aydin Tepe may extend two and a half miles further and are eagerly working to find out for sure. Throngs of visitors flock to the newly opened site, which the mayor hopes will draw increased tourism to the region, a seemingly realistic prospect considering 30,000 people traveled there last year despite the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Number 1. The Jersey House of Horror International headlines rarely report much from the Channel Islands, a sleepy archipelago located in the English Channel off the French coast of Normandy. But in 2008, media outlets around the world reported the discovery of human bone fragments, secret underground rooms, and narratives of abuse at Haut de la Garenne, a former orphanage located on the island of Jersey. Stories of punishment rooms containing shackles and blood-stained bathtubs fueled widespread suspicions that terrible things happened here. The bone fragments mostly belong to animals, and those identified as human date back several centuries, ruling out any recent killings. But the official investigation, codenamed Operation Rectangle, uncovered disturbing evidence of child abuse dating back to 1945. Horrifying acts allegedly took place in an underground network of four rooms, where orphans were severely punished. The physical evidence spoke for itself. Within these rooms, police reportedly found shackles and a concrete bath, as well as graffiti stating, I've been bad for years and years. The ominous message was accompanied by the claims of over 100 victims who shared their stories with authorities. 
Several former employees were charged, but many defended themselves against or flat out denied the allegations they faced. An official report found that the facility was an unsuitable substitute parent and survivors who pursued a civil lawsuit were compensated. It is hard to even imagine what went on at this house of horrors. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn about more underground discoveries, let me know in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.